All right, people. Oh, no. He was spooked by a wild Puccina. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are playing Pokemon Cops version, a game where you play as a police officer in the Pokemon universe, and instead of getting gym badges, you solve crimes. So we have a secret villain at the end. Let's get started. Our first stop is the Police Academy, where we got to get introduced into all the stuff that we're going to be doing, as well as choosing our starter Pokemon. And so while entering a Pokemon Center, we notice that there is a scuffle going on and a crisis. So we head over and get ourselves our first Pokemon. Our choices are the following. Aaron, Vana, and uh, Orzangus. And after a lot of deliberation, we decide to go for Carvana because it's going to have that nice water dark typing, which will be really useful when it turns into a Sharpedo. So we get Bite and Leer, of course, as our starting moves, and we defeat the Zigzagoon in no time. Now, since we did such a good job, we are taken under the wing of Officer Flash here, who sends us out on specific missions for us to get the Officer Badge. Well, basically the permission to be an official officer in the Hoenn region. And of course, we nickname our Carvana Water Nuts. Oh, I got a free Growlithe! Let's go! I didn't even know I was going to get that. I literally put that in the thumbnail, by the way. <laughs> so now that we have ourselves our mission, we have to go out and look for any criminals, and there's loads of them out there in the world, apparently. All right, people. Oh, no! <laughs> Bro, all right, people, Professor Birch. He was spooked by a wild Puccina. It was a bloody scene, buddy. Never go out of town without a Pokemon. So we decide to visit the home of Brendan, and it turns out that his mom thinks he's her perfect son, but it turns out he's been a little criminal. Yes, we catch him in a dirty act, and it's time to battle him. However, our Carvana is not strong enough to defeat the Mudkip, so luckily we do have Bob the Growlithe, and we go in with him using Bite. We do also have Aurora, which is not as useful, but after about three or so bites, we get to win against Brendan, and now we're gonna put him in jail. He's a thug! It's all his father's fault! <laughs> Yes, his mom gave up on him very, very quickly. After dealing with a lot of, frankly, messed up crimes, it's time to go and deal with the evil lad who's actually <laughs> two people inside of the professor's lab. It's Nerd Cory, and we're gonna take out his team of, well, a singular Zigzagoon. And it's not gonna take more than a few bites, and there it is, we got the win. And also, we're gonna put this guy in prison, but in self-defense, we end up actually lethally wounding this crazy guy, and he goes, oof. You're a cop, it's okay. What is this <laughs> game? What is, what am I? What? Now, I should point out, this game is definitely not PG because there is a lot of really messed up stuff in it. But either way, this guy's doing some messed up stuff. So we take on the weirdo and we defeat his Nincada and the rest of his team in no time. Oh, <laughs> Ruffled, you've completed your training mission. Good. That was training, by the way. So now we have ourselves our officer badge, which means we can go out there and start exploring the world. Now, one of the things you have to realize is we have to solve crimes. We don't actually need gym badges instead. So yeah, that's basically what we're going to be thinking of doing. We get ourselves a Lotat into our team, which we will definitely be needing. And then we run into a gang that's trying to stop us from making progress to the Petalburg City. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to have to beat these guys. So luckily, we do have Water Nuts and Bob, and these guys got water and fire on their side, which is quite interesting if you think about it. But these guys are not that difficult. They have a Zigzagoon and a Surskit, not really the hardest Pokemon to defeat. And after dealing with them, we have another lady to deal with here, and then we make ourselves into Petalburg. And here we find a guy who is just publicly urinating, which is not okay. So we make sure we put him in his place by defeating him. Then we enter Wally's house to the discover a very grim scene. It looks like everybody in this building has been oofed, and Wally, well, Wally seems to be quite gone. And it turns out that Wally thinks he's literally turned into Arceus, so now we gotta deal with him and stop him from causing even more chaos, and that's exactly what we do. And this battle is heated, but not as heated as the last battle we have against him, so stay tuned. And as we're about to arrest Wally, it turns out that he has teleport on his Abra, so he heats out of there and we can't actually capture him yet, but now we're done with Petalburg and it's time to head to the next location. And the next location, the next mission is gonna be in the Petalburg Woods, where we run into these guys that are having way too much fun with Shroomish, if you know what I mean. Nonetheless, after dealing with them and defeating them, we run into Team Aqua Grunt, who basically is trying to get this guy, but we stop him and he runs away. And after this, we go up the route, and it turns out the guy who we saved, as well as the Aqua Grunt, were both oofed by these Team Magma Grunt. So we deal with them, and after this, we are technically supposed to be able now to go and complete our academy training, which is exactly what we do. Now that the academy training is done, we head to the giant office, or I guess HQ, of the police academy and the police office or the Hoenn police. And here we talk to the, well, leader of the police, which is going to be Steven. Yeah, Steven Stone himself is a leader of the police headquarters. So 
I don't really know what to say about that. But hey, pretty cool. Nonetheless, after dealing with this, we're now allowed to, you know, go into the world and explore. And we're going to go over to Rossboro first of all. And in Rossboro, we run into a team Aqua Grund who instantly wants to cause trouble. So we deal with him very appropriately. And then when we try to go into the Devon Corp, this guy is blocking us with a very menacing Dragonite. So, or actually a Charizard in this case. But nonetheless, after dealing with that, we go and deal with the slums. Now, the slums here are led by a evil team villain. And these guys serve as a similar thing to a gym leader in the game. So we got to make sure we deal with him and defeat him to make progress. I want to marry my Gardevoir. What? The fuck did I just hear? And so after that weirdness, it's time to take on this slum leader or slum lord. Uh, cool trainer Rohan is his name. And he has a Beldum in his team. So we go for the flamethrower using our boy Bob. And the thing with Bob is, he's not going to be able to evolve just yet because we do not have a Firestone and we won't get one until much later into the game. And when it comes to the Nose Pass, we luckily get the Burn, which is enough to get him to, well, end up dying in this case, leaving his final Pokemon a Zigzagoon, which luckily our boy Water Nuts can easily take out. We even get the Confusion after using Water Pulse, which is great. So a second Water Pulse is all we need. And that's the Slumlord Cool Trainer Rohan being defeated. Holy crap. It's a rare candy. What, what? We walk inside this house of this weird old couple and we talk to them and something is very sus about the man. So we talk to his Pikachu and then we look in the safe behind the Pikachu and turns out that they have some illicit products inside of here. So we got to deal with them and of course defeat the old man and his Pikachu, which we do in a easy fashion. And we run into some stuff that, uh, yeah, yeah, you just don't want to see in a Pokemon game. This is why people shouldn't be allowed to do ROM hacks, but either way, let's continue. So we head over to Briny's house and turns out Briny's not around anymore and now the police boat is is what we have as an option instead. So we get to Duford, who actually has a, uh, I guess, prison at it. So we go to the prison and it turns out that three people have escaped from the prison. And these three people are specifically criminals that we have dealt with a little bit in the past. So let's go capture them again. One of the first ones is Cool Trainer Ted, who has a Ponita that we can easily defeat with a water pulse or two. And that's exactly what we do. Then Ted decides to yeet himself into the water and we got to deal with Cool Trainer Dena, which was his buddy, who also has a, well, just a few Pokemon that are not that difficult to deal with, like a deli bird, for example, with bite from our water nuts, it's not a problem whatsoever. So, leaving the last battle against Brendan, yes, and he has a why not first, which we defeat using water nuts. Then he also uses a snow runt, which is actually surprising because I was expecting to see the mudkip again. But nonetheless, the snow run comes in. We try to hit flamethrower, which takes a while, but after using Bob with flamethrower, we do get it eventually. Then we switch back into water nuts. We go for bite to do a little damage on the Morsh top because it is actually really difficult, but luckily, our bites do the work and eventually we get the win against Brendan and we're going to try to put him back into prison but he actually knows how to surf and uh, that's exactly what he does. He swims away but since we do not know how to swim but yeah we basically managed to stop some of the criminals but uh, well one got away. So now we're going to head over to the next location and that's going to be inside of the Doofer gym itself where it turns out that the man himself Brawly has been doing some sketchy stuff so we got to make sure we defeat him and stop him in his illicit activity. Now what is he doing? Well he's got himself a matchup, a Makuhita and also a Metatype but we defeat all of them and then this ends up happening. This is awkward. Very awkward. Okay look officer I really don't want to go to prison north of here. Wait, how about I just give you a bribe and you just let me go? All right, boys, we have a decision. Question is, do I take it? I think the answer is... <laughs> Hey, yo, boys, listen, money's tight. Yo, you got to do what you got to do. I got a nugget. Let's go. <laughs> so after giving ourselves a little pay raise, we then decide to head over to the next location, which is going to be Slateport. And it turns out that Slateport has been fully overran by Team Aqua and Team Magma Grunts. It seems like they're in a conflict over some stuff at one of the facilities here. And so we're going to just simply defeat all these guys and also make sure we get ourselves a few items and such that we'll be requiring before taking on one of the admins. And one of these admins will be specific found inside of the museum. You guys know the museum is usually where you gotta head to in general in the game, but here we'll find a Team Magma Grunt that has more or less destroyed everybody else. So we decide to take this man on. It's Magma Admin Jim, and he's got himself a Nummel. So we start off with a bite from our boy Bob, which does quite a bit of damage. Then he goes with a Soda Pop, which heals him up, which is a little bit annoying, but luckily Nummel is not that big of a deal. Next up is a Mighty Yina. I think about switching out, but decide to stay in as we do have Flamethrower, which is a one-hit KO right on that boy, and we get a level 23 as well from this. Next up, though, is going to be none else than the Houndor. And in this case, we go for Bite, which of course is not going to do that much damage.
damage, but it's still our best option as going for Flamethrower is not really going to do anything in this case. So we make sure to bite all our way till the end and we defeat one of the Team Magma admins, Jim. And now we're dealt with them in Slateport. But that is not the end of things. This slum area here is also controlled by one of the bad boys uh, of Team Magma or Aqua, I think. But either way, it doesn't really matter. We got to deal with them as well. So we talk to this lady. She tells us that we got to go defeat a few more of the grunts in the city, which is exactly what we end up doing. After doing this, we enter the slums and now we can take on one of the Team Aqua grunts. Now, the first grunt is going to be this guy with a Totodile who we defeat easily. The next one is this lad right here. Same thing with the Zubat. We one hit KO the Carvana as well with Bite and Flamethrower. Next is the Aqua Admin and this is going to be Shelly. Now, Shelly has four Pokemon. First up is going to be Mighty Yina, who we take out easily. Next is Feel, who leaves us at one HP, but a Flamethrower is enough to defeat it. We switch it to Water Nuts for the Core Fish and use Bite two times, and that's enough to get rid of it. And Lombre is the last Pokemon. So that means Shelly is gone. We defeated one of the evil people. Next, Alexa, the police officer, comes up to us, and then she asks us for a battle afterwards, which is actually we do comply with, but her team is actually really difficult, I'm going to be honest. The first Pokemon she's going to be using is going to be none else than Pikachu himself. So we go Flamethrower, which is a one-hit KO. Next Pokemon is a Ninetales. Here we do have a little bit of a more difficult situation. We go for Takedown, Bite, and eventually, after going through Confuse Ray multiple times, we do get it. And Arcanine is a final Pokemon, which we also defeat. We run into a very powerful, I guess, police officer, and then we capture a Oddish, which we name uh, Devil's Lettuce. So, yeah, don't question it too much. We also get an Electrike that we nickname Larry, after Larry in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And then, of course, we go and deal with Wally, who actually ends up literally oofing uh, Watson. So we get a battle Larry who has a Swablu, or not Larry, Wally, who has a Swablu, who we wanted KO. Absolute same thing, we wanted KO. The Abra ends up being the most difficult one, but eventually after a few tries, we do get it as well. Curlia is the next thing. It hits us with a Psychic there. We go for Flamethrower twice, and that is the victory. And Wally is pissed off, but that doesn't really matter to us. He leaves, and we're going to meet him later. We actually capture ourselves a Geodude because we do need to get through this area. We also capture a Meryl because we need Rock Smash and Strength. Then we run into May, who is basically trying to uh, oof a bunch of people. She has a Sneasel that we one hit KO with our Flamethrower. As you may notice, Flamethrower is pretty much doing all the work. Even against the Combuskin, I mean, not Flamethrower, but just regularly, Bob is doing all of the work. So we save this couple and then we go and deal with this guy who has a Heracross that we also one hit KO using Aerial Ace and we get HM04, which is Strength. That lets us get up to Mount Chimney. Now on Mount Chimney, we're going to run into none else than, well, you guys know who he is, uh, Maxi himself. We're going to be dealing with him because what's the deal with Maxi? Well, he wants to steal the media rights here to do some sketchy stuffs with it, but we're going to be defeating his whole team. Goal bad, camera up, everything goes down, and we've defeated Maxi pretty easily. Then we run into the other boss, of course, Archie, who's telling us there is a secret base down in this area that we should go to where Team, uh, well, team Magma will be located. So we go and do that. We defeat the first guy right here as a Puchina, and we also want hit KO. Our team, as you may see, is actually much larger now. We go into Water Nuts for this number with Water Pulse, which does a lot of damage, and eventually we're able to enter the base. Now, when we enter it, it turns out that there is some Magma Grunts waiting for us, and they beat us up, and then they take us inside of the base. So we have to defeat them to get out of the base, and there is loads of them in here. I really mean it. They are, like, just an infinite amount of literally Magma Grunts. So we're going to battle through all of them to get to Lava Ridge Town, because in Lava Ridge Town is where we need to go to continue the progress with the game. And right now... Well, we're stuck inside of this cave, just, well, spamming Flamethrower all the way through till the end. And as you may notice, there is a lot of grunts, but it's a really good opportunity to level up a little bunch of our Pokemon, as we do have a under-level team at the moment. And later on, you'll notice that after doing some grinding, we're able to finally actually catch up with a lot of our Pokemon. But nonetheless, the base is a long place, and it takes a while to get through all of it. But eventually, once we do get through it, uh, well, guess what? We're in Lava Ridge Town, and now we're going to deal with a very weird situation. It turns out that Flannery is actually sort of dating one of the admins here, so we're going to have to take on the admin, Jim, to be able to take on Flannery next. And Jim has got a okay team that doesn't take too long to defeat, but Flannery is the difficult one. All right, Flannery. Let's see what you got, mate. Let's see what you got. So, of course, since it is Flannery, it's going to be a bunch of fire types. Slugma is one of the, well, more hard ones to deal with, but not as hard as the Torkoal at the end. Camerupt is also easy with the help of Water Pulse on Water Nuts, but Torkoal was the hardest one. Luckily, a, well, a bunch of flinches with Bite and a bunch of moves right there were the thing that saved us, and eventually Flannery is dealt with. Now, however, we got to head over to the next location, and we also got to get ourselves Surf. So, we make it over here and get ourselves a Abra, which we called Houdini, but I didn't really know 
how to spell Houdini, but that's beside the point. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, we now make it to Falibor Town, where this guy is letting his Puccina just feast on somebody's body, which is really messed up. But nonetheless, we gotta get up into the Meteor Falls, which is exactly what we do. And here we run into one of the officers from, well, the HQ. And this guy is a captain, and he's telling us to join in on a bus they're about to do. So we join in, and we take on some Team Magma Grunts that are doing some illicit stuff, and then we, of course, defeat them. After this, we're now able to make some further progress with Surf. Then we talk to Police Chief Steven, and of course, we do a ton of grinding. We level up and evolve a bunch of our Pokemon, and now it's time to go to the Weather Institute, where something illicit is happening, something strange. It turns out that a bunch of criminals are in there, but one of them is also Brendan. Yes, Brendan has been up here and, well, causing havoc in the Weather Institute, oofing some people, but we gotta deal with him, and that's exactly what we do. And of course, his most difficult Pomon is the Marsh Tomp he has, and the Snow Runt as well, and we do end up defeating those, and then he calls his dad in, so yeah, Norman comes and helps him out. He's got a Vigoroth in there, which we one-hit KO, and of course, I mean, it's just a usual team. Slacking's the last one, and luckily, with our last Pokemon alive, Rock Hard, we get the Rock Throw, and we end up defeating Norman as well. So yeah, we deal with them for the final time, at least I think so. And so, after that Wombo combo, we gotta battle Alexa again. This time, her her Raichu is now here instead of the Pikachu. The Ninetales is defeated using our boys who have been evolved evil as well as our boy uh, Water Nuts. And then we deal with this guy who's super sketchy inside of this house. We defeat him easily. And we meet Steven on this bridge and he tells us to destroy this Aqua Grunt. Literally destroy him. That's literally what he tells us. Then we're told that something is happening on top of the mountain here. So we head on top of Mount Pyre. We capture ourselves a little ghastly that we add to our team. And we nickname him Randy for whatever reason. Don't ask why. Then we run into Maxi. And I thought we are going to be dealing with him. But it turns out that Wally actually stole the orbs from him. And that's exactly what ended up happening. So instead of dealing with him, we get the option of, uh, well, uh, orbs are the pain. Oh, my Lord. Finish it. Um... I get to literally end him? Finishing him. So, yeah, that's that's exactly what we do. Yeah, we uh, literally destroy him ruthlessly, as you may notice. It is a bit too much even for me. So, we make it to Lily Cove, and here we run into May once again. She has a Cacturn, her Blaziken, which we water pulls using our boy Water Nuts, who now is a Sharpedo and is much, much stronger and useful. Then we use Houdini, or oh, Houdini, uh, to defeat uh, some of the other Pokemon in our team, and eventually we put her handcuffs and tackle her. Then we get Firestone and finally evolve our latest boy into a freaking Arcanine. Yes, our boy Growlithe's finally evolved. Bob is now a proper Pokemon. Then we deal with a bunch of these guys in the slums. There's loads of them here, so we're gonna have to battle through a lot of them to just, you know, make as much progress as we possibly can. But yeah, like I said, there's loads of these guys, so it's gonna take a bit of time. But after dealing with their Vigoroths and their Loudreds, which there's a ton of, we can finally go and deal with the next situation, which is going to be in one of the bases in this area. And that's gonna be specifically the Team Aqua base, because I thought the slums were gonna be the most important area in this place, but no, it's just like a gang doing some weird stuff here, so they're not that big of a deal. However, once we've dealt with them, we go and take on Millions, which is uh, a weird guy who runs the Pokemon Museum in Lily Cove. He kind of just took it over, but yeah, he tells us that we should head over to Sotopolis, where Wally is doing some sketchy stuff, and before we can do that, we should also explore and go and take on the Team Aqua base, which is the Team Aqua hideout from original Pokemon Emerald. In here, there's of course going to be loads of trainers. We deal with all of them, and they give an opportunity for Archie to escape. So we leave the hideout and head out and find the grinding cave, as well as this guy just sleeping with his wife, which was really weird. Then we head inside of the Space Center, take on Jim again, who leads Team Magma now instead of, uh, well, Maxi, because Maxi is literally oofed. So we got to deal with this guy. We take on this Rapidash using Water Nuts and Surf, which is really strong. But then we can't do anything about the Devon Corporation because they're doing sketchy stuff. And we're told by Steven, don't deal with them. Instead, go and finish off the final pieces of Team Aqua, which is exactly what we do. We took out one of the grunts here. And then we're told by, well, uh, Alexa, as well as one of the other officers, that Wally is doing some crazy stuff. So we should head to Sotopolis. And here we run into Wally. And now I'm going to tell you, Wally is the big bad of this game. Yes, they made the most most innocent kid, the biggest baddie in this game. He has an Absol that we one-hit KO with Flamethrower. He also uses a Altaria, which we hit a few times, but she has a Perish Song on there, so I was a bit scared. I had to switch out and in and out and in and out and multiple times. Magneton is an easy hit because of the Steel Typing, so it's not that big of a deal. And same thing for Alakazam. We get the Burn, so we're lucky with that. And the final Pokemon of the team is going to be the Gardevoir, and of course the Burn here comes in clutch, and we get the win against Wally, but that's not the end of it, because Wally has more to offer. There is even more Pokemon in this arsenal. I brought a city to its knees. Now check this out. Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, come pull. 
Behold, the Grand Archeo Grim Demon Ray Quays all under my control. Fear me, bow to me. I, the Great Wally, am now superior to all the humans. Careful. Let me show you something else. I contain the power of these legendary Pokemon into mere Pokeballs. I am invincible. I will kill every man on this planet. Then I will repopulate the Earth using my superior... Oh my... Oh my god. And here it is, the most extreme ultimate battle of this game. Groudon is up first. We use extreme speed with our boy Bob, which does a lot of damage. We have to use a max potion, though, to make sure we can survive this, because it is a difficult battle, and I, I really mean it. If you don't have potions and revives, you're going to struggle. Surf comes in next with our boy Water Nuts, and it's enough to get rid of that Groudon. Kyogre is next. We go for Spark, and after two hits with Larry, it's enough to defeat it. Rayquaza is next. The Dragon Claw does get us pretty easily. We go and try to switch in between multiple of our Pokemon, we do a bit of damage using our boy Houdini, but it's not enough. So I max potion and also revive up our boy Bob, because that's exactly what we need to do if we're going to be able to defeat this battle. So Rayquaza is up next. We flamethrower twice, and ladies and gentlemen, the Rayquaza is down, which means Wally has been defeated. And finally, Wally and us, well, we do pass out, but he has been now arrested. And that's going to be the end of the journey for us, ladies and gentlemen. There is some more stuff in the game, but I want you guys to check that out on your own if you want to play the game. I will warn you, though, it is a very extreme game. It's not a very chill game, so just a fair warning if you're going to be playing it. It does have a lot of rudeness, and it's definitely not PG. But either way, ladies and gentlemen, that was Pokemon Cops. That was our journey. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, just drop a like down below. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.